Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm responding to some user comments I got on my last video. No drama, no drama. But uh, these comments had to do with, hey, DJ, can you show us how you install Debian 12 and include maybe some of your, your customizations that you always do? Well, I'm going to do them all except for how I harden uh, harden things. I, I've done some videos in the past on hardening. I haven't changed my procedure much. So if you're interested in those, you can go check that out. So I'll show you what I do to set up hardware today. I'm gonna, I have a, a ThinkPad. It is an old uh, X1 Extreme. I think it is Gen 2, which would make it a Core i9. So yeah, it's it's a core i it's a core i7, but it's a ninth gen architecture. So it has a Nvidia graphics card. I think it's a junky old 1650, but the 1650 is fine for what I do. I'm not gaming with it; just using it to browse the web, gather stories for this channel. So yeah, it works good for that. It's getting to be. Four, four and a half years old, I think, right about now. We'll go through that. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll show you what my recommends are for Debian 12. So why don't we get started? We'll delve in a little bit. I'll talk about a little bit about, you know, some of my philosophy about Debian, where I think it fits best and some things that I've heard other YouTubers say that you can do. And I'm like, Whoa, no, don't, I wouldn't do that. So let us talk about some of these things. And, uh, and then I'll come back at the end. Whenever you're, you're moving to, this is just my opinion. But whenever I'm looking at a new, a new release, I don't want to necessarily disturb my working environment, right? Because I'm not sure this is something I want to keep. So I want to go and I want to put this on a virtual machine first just to kind of see how well it works. Do I like it? Does it have the features I need? Does it perform well? Can I figure it out without throwing my computer into the trash or through the window? So yeah, I mean, those are things that, there, it's the, the a distribution that you want to use on a daily basis is going to be based on the amount of frustration that particular distro gives you. I've heard other YouTubers suggest that you use SID as your base uh, repository. So you may recall that what I talked about, if you haven't seen the video, go look at it. I'll put a, a marker here for you to go and look at that. But there are actually three different repositories that you can use that uh, for Debian. And the first one is SID. People say that's a, re a rolling release. It's not a release at all. It is a dumping ground for every, for the developers of packages to put their latest uh, changes. So that's bugs and all. If you want a really frustrating experience with Debian and, and you have no idea what you're doing, put SID out there. Yeah, and I'll guarantee you, you'll be crashing all over the place. Don't use SID for your basic <laughs> installs. That's just, that is a bad idea. The, the, uh, the stable release is just what it says. It's a long-term stable release. So, I mean, I always hear this comment about, well, you know, those packages are really old. I, I think sometimes that we get into this mindset where we have to have the latest and greatest of everything that's brand new. Well, if you're looking for a stable, now, if you're a gamer, Forget Debian. You're on the wrong platform. Uh, if you're a gamer, you're not after a stable release. You're after a release that has the latest and greatest stuff on it. Whether or not it works or not, that's your problem. But if you, but if you're using Debian for gaming, you'll find yourself cursing and cussing and throwing the thing in, into the trash. And the longer you get, between, uh, the more distant you become from the uh, Debian release date until the next one, the older the packages are going to be because Debian does it on the stable side. They don't change the version. Now, they do backports. So to say that the packages are really old 
is really a misinformed statement because any there are fixes that are uh, put into the release to fix bugs as well as fixes that are put into the release that fix security holes. Those could come from uh, newer packages, but they in order to keep Debian stable, the whole idea behind stable is that you don't have to go through a formal test in order to recertify for a production environment. Where do features come from? What is the driving force behind features? Usually it has to do with trying to uh, compete with another package that has similar capabilities. So it's kind of a one-upmanship that takes place there. It isn't always because it's coming from the user base on features that the user base itself wants. Now, hopefully that does happen a lot of the times, but not always. So, yeah, we get into this rat race of adding features that no one gives a crap about or will ever use. It fills up the, the uh, application program space, starts using more memory, more processor, more graphics card use. Yeah, it's, it's, called, it's called the hardware drag. In the commercial world, they use software, and you can look at Apple and Windows, Microsoft Windows. They they all do this. They they all do what's called the hardware drag. You probably noticed that in Windows 11, where all of a sudden Microsoft obsoleted most of the old hardware out there in order to run Windows 11. The reason for that is to sell hardware, and so that's kind of an agreement with their. Their partners that a hey, I mean they do this in order to I mean, it's a back scratching thing right so yeah I'll scratch your back you scratch mine and then together we make money in the business where do we begin where do we start well the first place to start is with the Debian website itself so let's go I saw some comments that somebody was saying I don't know where to go to download the packet to to download the installer. Uh, okay, well, it's right here in this giant download. This is that. See this right here? It says download Debian operating system. That that's probably the first place you should look. And then up here in this small text, they say, "Thank you for downloading. This is Debian 12 code name uh, Bookworm, and this is the net installer, which is is the net installer means that you have to be able." to install this with a machine that's connected to the internet because the packages are not going to be in. There's some packages that are there, but they're only the core applications that you need in order to boot, get things up and running, partition the hard drive and, and, and get it ready to receive a payload from the Debian installer. So net install then will go to the internet, pick off the packages it needs from the Debian repository that you choose. So the first thing we want to do is download that install. And there's my two packages. Let's see what we end up with here. Boom. Debian 12 should start with a B4 and end with a E6. E6. Okay. B4 and E6. I got it. So, yeah, you could look through that whole thing if you wanted to, but that's all I need to look at. Uh, so, I have a... You should always do that because you want to make sure that that this is the official ISO that was released by Debian and someone hasn't managed to gain entry into their uh, repository and substitute a version that has malware in it. In the Linux community, the, that doesn't happen very often, but I do remember a couple of instances where it did. And so <laughs> we want to be careful about that. All right, so the next thing we will need is a USB stick. Okay, so I'm going to put my disk in here, and there we go. It's an old Tails disk, so we'll go ahead. And, that should be fine. You can you can just just do a copy if you want to the raw device SDA. Uh, remember, and, and well, let's just go ahead and try that and see if it works.
Try that with Windows. And look at there, it says Debian on it. So let's see what we what we actually got here, partition-wise. So we have an EFI partition, and that will boot, but not on this machine. This is a this is an ARM-based machine, so this is not going to boot. I have my my boot drive in, and I'm going to go ahead and just do this as a graphical install. You will notice that it does say Debian um, GNU Linux. UEFI installer menu. So it will pick whether or not you're in how the boot is set up in your BIOS. So if it's legacy, it'll set up for BIOS. And if it has uh, the normal UEFI, it'll set it up for that. So you'll notice that there is some errors on this because I, I'm not, I think because it's not using the standard driver for the, for the, you know, for the graphics, but so the first thing we need to do is to set up our language. And we'll do that. United States. Keyboard is American English. Yours may be different. So because this is a net install, it's got to, it has to configure either the Ethernet or the, or the Wi-Fi. So <clears throat> I have to set up my Wi-Fi environment, and I'm not going to do that on camera. Sorry about that, but I'll be back when I get this installed. All right, so I put my, uh, my pass key in. And it's attempting to connect with the various pieces. As long as your driver is discovered, you may run into some issues with this. I, I'm, so I'm going to go ahead and set this up. Now, at this point, this is something that everybody always forgets. So if, if you put in a root password here, you will not have sudo enabled for your user account. If you leave this blank, your user account will become sudo, but your root account will be disabled. There are some caveats to that that you might want to consider before you answer this question. If you boot and for some reason your system, let's say it, let's say that it's going through the FS tab file, and it cannot mount one of your drives, it will attempt to go into single user mode to allow you to fix that. So you can go to your console and then you'll have a shell prompt that you can use in order to fix the problem, whatever it is with FS tab or whatever problem that you have on the system. It gives you the opportunity to drop in single user mode and that means you'll have to be root. However, if your root account is disabled, it will fail. And now you've lost one of your mechanisms that you can use in order to recover from a systems error, which I always think is a dumb idea. But if first, okay, so here's my rule that I always follow. If this is a server, disable root. No matter what, disable root. Because yeah, it, chances are if you got a server failure, that's a different problem and you're going to have to take it out of service anyway. So, yeah. Okay. There is ways to recover from it, by the way. But so just remember by entering this password, I do not have sudo on my default account. This, I just like to have that option. Normally on a server, I would disable root, but not on a workstation. Because you're probably going to have, you know, multiple drives that you're going to be using. So. All right. And we'll set up our time zone. It's going to detect our disks. I want it. I, yeah, this is asking me, do you want me to shove over one of them? Because both of the drives in this machine have operating systems on it. No, I, I want you to use the entire disk. 
the one um, I currently have in use is the 960. So I'm going to put this on the other drive. And we'll do it all in one partition. We'll finish it up. It's going to ask me, are you sure? Are you going to, are you going to write to the drive and blow it up? Yep. I sure am. And now we just wait for it to finish the installation. I'm going to wait until it gives me the last bit of choices here. So, yeah, so, there we go. So now it's asking me to pick my repo where I want it. And now it's going to start configuring and hopefully downloading packages from the Internet. So I'll be back when this is done. Okay, so it took it took about five minutes, and it and now it's going to run task select. This is the same as it was before. And this will take quite a, well. Yeah, this is going to be quite a while. I'll be back when it's ready to reboot. You've seen this before. Okay, it's finishing up now, so I don't know. It might take a little bit to do this, but probably not too much longer, even with the Wi-Fi being so slow. Nope, it's not set to UTC, nor do I want it that way. Okay, so we're done. Okay, it sees the other one, the other installation of this. So this should be our fresh install here, I hope. We'll see if it, if it actually will boot, and it should. It's putting the password on the other display, and I'm going to the display and turning on mirror. Okay, now you can see what I'm doing at least. I hope. We want appearance. Natural mouse scrolling. That's not natural for me. Maybe it is for you, but it isn't for me. Okay. The other thing is power. Again, we want to get those turned off. This one, you'll see it has the advanced power saver and it will dim the screen, automatic suspend. No, we don't want that. We're going to actually crush that. But so right now, I need to get this updated. Yeah. I'm kind of surprised that there's an update, actually, because normally that's all taken care of. Oh, yep. I'm going to update my sources file. Um, to put in non free and contrib. And then we'll go ahead and refresh our packages.
and hopefully it'll detect my, yeah, it shows that I have a 1650 mobile, and that's correct. It says that all drivers, and then it's recommending that I install the NVIDIA driver package. But before we do that, there's a couple of things I need to do. So let's go to the out to Debian and make sure that we disable, we want to disable this hibernation stuff. So there's actually a, a wiki page that goes through the suspend process because on Debian, it actually works. The first way you can disable it is by masking off the suspend services. The, and then if you want to bring them back, there's a command right below it if you want to reinstate them. But the, the more correct way to do this is right here. I went ahead and copied this. And what it wants me to modify is, I'm going to go over to system D. And it's telling me to go and mo create a file in sleepd.config. Well, I don't have that. And if I, which I could create, but the configuration for sleep doesn't even bother to read that. So didn't. There we go. That'll work. I'm going to go ahead and just clean this out. And then we'll paste in. What they gave us and you'll notice that it the one that was in here previously was a lot longer but this is all i need to prevent this from suspending so yeah the automatic suspension is fixed it also won't suspend if i close the lid so yeah it'll continue to run all right so we've got that part done we did the nvidia check on the on the detect and now I need to I need to get a couple of things. <clears throat> when you install the NVIDIA drivers on some systems, you have to go to the NVIDIA website, download the drivers for Linux, and then put your system into single user mode, run the thing, and then bring it back into, into multi-user mode and, and fiddle around with trying to figure out how to get the Nuovo driver to be disabled. Well, you don't have to do any of that with uh, the NVIDIA drivers on Debian. You can just do, so the first thing I want to do is, I'm going to, it is an AP, it is a DKMS driver, so that means there's modules that are going to get created. And so I will need to compile uh, those modules and to do that, I'm going to need to have the Linux headers for my architecture, which is AMD 64. And we'll go ahead and get that done. Normally at this point, you would have to go in and update your sources list to make sure that it has the uh, NVIDIA, uh, the non-free and the contrib, but we've already done that. So all I need at this point is just to install the NVIDIA driver. I also want the firmware uh, miscellaneous, and this is non-free. This allows me to see, left off the APT, that might help. <clears throat> All right, so now we're good. So this will take a bit. I'm just going to let it run. Yeah, it's saying, well, I've got the Novo kernel module loaded. But don't worry, it's going to fix it. So it's just saying, just reboot your machine afterwards and it'll clean it up. All right. Looking good so far. Okay, that looks better. All right, let's take a look. So yeah, it's got the GPU running. All 
This will probably be tied to the frame rate of the monitor. Yep, it is. So that's that's the um, that's the configuration section. That's that's what all I wanted to show you was uh, getting an Nvidia card up and running, and just just to validate that it is running. That is one thing I did not do. The driver version five twenty five is in use. That's all there is to that part. I mean, as you can see. Even I have trouble with it sometimes. So what did we go through today? So I did an install. I don't know if I'm gonna leave it in, but I did. I did an install with a virtual machine. That's typically how I start out when I'm working with either a new distribution I haven't used before, or a distribution that's a new version, because I don't. I don't necessarily want to just throw this into the my my mix and then mess everything up for myself on what I'm doing going forward, right? So you, you'll, one thing you'll notice on this is that you won't see me installing a lot of applications. Well, why is that? Why are you installing applications? I don't, I don't do things that way. I have all of my applications set up through Chasm. It's free and it's all driven off of Docker where you can have your individual applications get launched under Docker. They're kept on a backend server. Chasm does for Docker what Cubes does for virtual machines. So in other words, you have a template application, whether that be Brave or Firefox, or it could be even GIMP, or uh, it could even be LibreOffice. But those template applications Co they copy over, they come up, you do your work in them, and when you're finally done and you shut down, everything is destroyed. So if you want to save your work, you have to save it offline. Uh, otherwise, it's gone. Uh, otherwise, your work is gone. So, yeah, it, um, but the idea behind it is, is that it's, it doesn't leave anything behind. There's no trace. It's just uh, nothing to track, nothing to look at. It's all gone. Uh, there's a number of things that you can do with it. You can even bring up entire distro, distros in it. Alpine will launch. You can put uh, Ubuntu up on it. I th there's also an older version of Debian. I didn't see a Debian 12 yet. But there's also, you know, some of the security like Parrot or or what have you along with that. So, yeah, you, you have a lot of those different kinds of things. You can also uh, you can also customize your own apps, but you have to release it, you know, into the Docker hub. And so now you've made it public for other people to use. But, you know, that, it is growing uh, along those lines. One of the one of the latest changes to Chasm is it, it used to build out all these applications already for you, but it doesn't anymore. So that's why you won't see me installing applications. Um, second, the I don't need to. Um, I do not use passwords for SSH. I use certs, I use certificates. Then we went through kind of some general configuration when we came up. We used the network install. Uh, which means that you have to have an internet connection for Debian in order to install it. And I showed you how the new non-free firmware works. So most of the older mo it, so most of the older drivers will work fine. But if you have a new laptop that is newer than 6.1, they probably won't. You probably will be missing drivers for your card. That's going to be true on no matter what what uh, version of Linux you get. That's all I had for today. I want to send out a special thank you to my Patreons and also uh, to my channel members. I sure do appreciate you. And uh, for those of you who made it this far to the end of the video, hey, thanks for watching. Appreciate you too. Hope to see you all in the next video and bye for now. <music>